Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Kessler, a consultant specializing in science communication and the evaluation of superconducting materials. It's Friday, January 8th, and it's time for your first Fusion News update of 2021. Stories today include, one, is nuclear fusion the answer to the climate crisis? Two, the UK's quest for affordable fusion by 2040. Three, Scientists collaborate on public-private partnership to facilitate the development of commercial fusion energy. Four, clean nuclear. Oxford startup 10 years ahead of government targets in race to build fusion plant. Five, fusion legislation signed into law. Six, Korean artificial sun sets the new world record of 20 second long operation at 100 million degrees. I also have a couple of bonuses for you at the end, so stick around. One, is nuclear fusion the answer to the climate crisis? The Guardian published an article last week discussing fusion's role in fighting climate change. The article focuses on the collaboration between the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, and Commonwealth Fusion Systems, or CFS, and their role in U.S. President-elect Joe Biden's $2 trillion climate change plan, which specifically mentions the inclusion of advanced nuclear technologies. CFS and MIT are currently planning to start construction of SPARC, their demonstration fusion facility, later this year. They plan to be able to put power on the grid by 2030 in order to be a part of the solution to the current climate crisis. According to Dr. Martin Greenwald, a senior research scientist on the project from MIT, fusion seems like one of the possible solutions to get ourselves out of our impending climate disaster. Two, the UK's quest for affordable fusion by 2040. BBC Future recently reported on the UK goal of developing a working fusion reactor by 2040, first announced in 2019, including a discussion of the proposed spherical tokamak for energy production, or STEP. STEP differs from ITER and many other proposed devices by relying on a spherical tokamak design, which can be more compact than traditional tokamaks. Another advantage of the STEP design is the use of an advanced diverter to exhaust the hot plasma, called the Super X diverter. This design is being tested at the MAST Upgrade Facility at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Andrew Storer, the chief executive of the UK's Nuclear Advanced Manufacturing Research Center, says, The biggest challenge isn't about the science, but the fact that scientists have to now deliver something in a practical sense. Three, scientists collaborate on public-private partnership to facilitate the development of commercial fusion energy. The Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, or PPPL, recently released information on their work with CFS, the Massachusetts-based fusion startup. Through the U.S. Department of Energy INFUSE program, which supports public-private collaborations between national labs like PPPL and companies like CFS, scientists were able to study some of the physics of the proposed facility, SPARC. Scientists were able to show, using two different simulations, that the high-energy alpha particles produced by the fusion reaction would be contained by the proposed SPARC design. In addition, results from their simulations will guide SPARC engineers by giving them a greater understanding of the sensitivity of the device to small deviations in magnetic field. Their work was published in the Journal of Plasma Physics in September. Four, clean nuclear. Oxford's startup 10 years ahead of government targets in race to build fusion plant. First Light Fusion, a fusion startup that spun out of Oxford University, has raised $25 million in new funding, allowing them to double their staff and upgrade their equipment. First Light, founded in 2011, is pursuing a unique method of inertial confinement fusion using asymmetric shockwaves. They are projecting that they will develop a power plant based on this technology by the 2030s, potentially beating the UK government goal of 2040 that I mentioned earlier. According to CEO Dr. Nick Hawker, it is vital that as we progress towards achieving fusion, we continue to advance our other work streams so we can maintain momentum towards both gain, but also delivering a workable, grid-ready fusion reactor. Five, fusion legislation signed into law. In an update to the news I reported back in September, the amendment on fusion energy research was included in the U.S. federal omnibus spending package that President Trump signed into law on December 27th. This amendment was added by U.S. Representatives Connor Lamb and Lori Trahan of Pennsylvania and Massachusetts, respectively. It includes an extension of the INFUSE program and authorizes new programs to support fusion energy research. It also establishes a milestone-based public-private partnership, which has been a major goal of the Fusion Industry Association since 2018. 
six. Korean artificial sun sets the new world record of 20 second long operation at 100 million degrees. Our last story was featured in the Fusion News video on December 4th, but I'd like to share some new articles that highlight the significance of the results from the Korea Superconducting Tokamak Advanced Research, or KSTAR, facility. During experiments in 2020, scientists in a joint research project from KSTAR, Seoul National University, and Columbia University managed to more than double their previous confinement record of 8 seconds by maintaining a 100 million degrees Celsius plasma for 20 seconds. This was accomplished using an internal transport barrier, or ITB, a layer in the plasma that limits the movement of particles due to turbulence. ITB improves the confinement of the system, allowing for the maintenance of high temperature plasmas for extremely long periods. KSAR achieved first plasma in 2008 and aims to maintain a plasma at 100 million degrees for at least 300 seconds by 2025. Stay tuned for more details from this KSTAR experimental campaign when they are shared in the 28th IAEA Fusion Energy Conference in May. Finally, check out some bonus Fusion news. First, the ITER project has released two new videos, both of which explore the ITER facility in more detail, including some of their adaptations to the COVID-19 pandemic. Follow the links below if you want to check them out. If you want more videos, check out the channels of some of the private Fusion companies shown under the Featured Channels tab on our YouTube page. Tokamak Energy just released an update on progress in 2020. Next, a Fusion crowdsourcing challenge has been launched. The International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, and the European Fusion Education Network, or FUSENET, are hosting a competition for Fusion fans to help build an interactive online database. The Fusion Device Information System Database, or FUSEDIS, was created by the IAEA 10 years ago and contains basic information on Fusion devices worldwide, including many different confinement mechanisms and configurations. The contest calls on non-experts or emerging experts to find and report the independent design parameters of active tokamaks and stellarators. These data, which include the radii, elongation, and magnetic field strength, among others, will be incorporated into FUSEDIS and serve as a useful resource for researchers. The link in the description leads to the contest webpage, which includes a description of all the prizes. Entries must be submitted by January 31st, so get working. That's all for Fusion News this week. Please like and subscribe for more Fusion News, and check out the links in the description if you want more information.